Hello, my name is Sarah Howe from Keith McMillan Instruments and today I'm going to give you a little tutorial about how to use the 12-step editor. So first go to our website www.keithmcmillan.com and then go to the 12-step section and click on the downloads button and find where it says the 12-step editor and and it will download that. And while that's downloading, you can register for 12-step news and updates. Open up the download and unzip the folder. And then you can drag that into your Applications folder so you don't lose it, or wherever you'd like to put it on your hard drive. And this is the 12-step editor's uh, folder structure. You've got the application here. You've got the 12-step manual and the presets folder. If you open that up, you've got the 12-step.json file for your presets. This file stores all of the data from your presets when you save using the editor. You also have a little backup of the 12-step.json file so you can restore the factory presets anytime you choose. And a setlist.json which stores your setlist. So you're going to want to leave the presets folder in that same directory and not move anything out, as well as the application. Okay, so now open up the 12-step editor. This is what it looks like. Down here in the bottom left corner is the device selection menu. When your 12-step is plugged in, it'll say 12-step, and if you unplug it, it'll say none. This is how you know the editor is receiving a connection from the 12 step. Now if you look over here at the global sensitivity dial uh, you can use this dial to adjust the sensitivity to increase or decrease on your 12 step. The select sensitivity dial works so that the higher you put it the less time it takes to hold your foot down on the select key and go into select mode when selecting presets. After updating these, in order for them to take effect on your 12-step, you need to hit the Update button. Then your 12-step will update and include these changes. So the next thing I'd like to show you is up here in the Preset box. You have two lists. The Preset List or Preset Library, which lists all of the presets that you have saved. And then you have a Set List. This is the list that you can put any preset in and those are the presets that will get updated to your 12-step when you press the update button. So here's the preset list. Um, you can scroll down and see all of them and you can select one and then you can edit it however you want. So let's take a look at the first preset, chromatic scale. If we wanted to resave this we would go up and press the save button. I'll show you more about that in a second. Here is the set list. This is what controls what presets get updated to your 12-step. If you click the clear all button, you can now pick and choose which preset you want to go on to your 12-step. You can choose the order and it's very convenient because you don't always want to have the same order every time you do a show and you don't always need the same presets every time you do a show. So I can just put four presets in my set list and click update and just have those four. Or you can autofill the set list and then it'll fill back up with every single preset. And then you click update and then your 12 step has every preset on it. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how to edit a preset. This top part referred to as the note editor works so that this top keyboard allows you to select which notes you want to use for each of the keys on the 12 step. So this key uh, represents the first key on the 12 step and if you click on the various notes you want to put on that key, every time you step on that key, you will get all of those notes and you can fill it up with up to five notes each key. You can also use the clear current key button to quickly just erase all the keys. 
or you can deselect a specific note by clicking on that note again. To transpose the pitches all at once, you can use the Transpose Pitches button and select how far you want to transpose them. I just lifted this all up an octave. I'll edit one key and I'm about to save this so I will select a different display name by using these little letter menus. Uh, now you can save a preset. Um, if I save it here it will update this preset but I think I would like to save a brand new preset so I'm going to scroll to a preset that replaces an unnamed preset which is not claimed yet. So I'll type in my preset name and press save. And now I'm still on the chromatic scale preset but if I go down here my new presets in the list and I can select it. Uh, so here we are. It's my new preset. And I'm going to add it to my set list. And I want it to be the only one there. So now that it's in my set list I can click update and now the scene is on my 12 step. And that last note is the note that I edited. So now I'm going to show you the MIDI parameters section. Here I can edit the channel, the MIDI channel that the data comes out on. And here I can turn on using a program change message with my scene. Turn it on or off and then if I turn it off then uh, the program and the bank message will not send out when I select the scene. But if I have it on the program and bank message will go out every time the scene comes up. You can also change the bend range and the transpose function just transposes it for you and doesn't actually change the keys in the note editor. Uh, here I can turn on voice B by choosing a channel number for it to come out of. If voice B is on channel 0 then you won't get any voice B at all. So you can turn that off by putting it to channel 0. And I'll just put that to channel 0 and resave my preset. Click update. So now you can hear that this has been transposed down five steps. So now I'll show you this uh, little section here, which is what we call the mod line section. Uh, here we've got the ability to assign all these different MIDI parameters to various sources that you can use from the 12 step. When you step on the 12 step, the various types of data you can get out are what we call sources. So here in the velocity parameter, if I use the velocity source, that is the velocity of my foot stepping on the 12 step. And if I use the negative velocity source, then the harder I step on the 12 step, the less the velocity will be. So it's opposite. If I set the velocity to off, then it will always come up as 127. So I'm just going to use the regular plus velocity source. Now, here in the bend parameter, I'm going to show you the tilt source, which takes the tilt of your foot and bends the pitch up or down depending on whether your foot is pointed up or down. So let me show you this. Uh, Re-upload the scene to my 12 step. You can hear the pitch bending. So that's the tilt source. You can also Use the pedal as a source if you have an expression pedal plugged in. I've got that assigned to my volume right now. Uh, you can use any of these. Here for panning, let me talk about uh, the key num source. This one allows you to use the number of the key. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 to determine the number that comes out of the 12 step for the panning parameter or whichever parameter you assign it to. So for this source, if I change the gain to something like 10, then it's great because the panning numbers come out 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, 110, 120, and 127. 
So each key has its own panning section, and as you go from the low notes to the high notes, uh, you get a nice pan from left to right. So that's what the gain does. It multiplies the source numbers by whatever number you want it to, in case you need to manipulate the data. So also available is a few CC mod lines. So you can output data from any source on any CC number you wish. And the rest of the mod lines consist of curves, uh, linear, sinusoidal, cosine, exponential, logarithmic, and a dead zone. The dead zone actually works really well with a tilt source, especially on bend, so that when the tilt of your foot is just normal, you can get a nice, good spot where nothing bends and you're not in danger of accidentally bending the note when you don't want to. You can also use the min and max to limit the data that comes out. So now I'm just going to perfect my preset here to how I want it. Change the transpose back to zero. Turn off my program change. And I think I'm ready to save this. So I'll just resave that preset and make sure it's in the set list there. Press update. And now the scene's on my 12 step. So that concludes this tutorial video for the 12-step editor. Keep a lookout for more. Thanks.